The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you called us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us courage like you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we gather before the Holy One, let us admit with the Apostle Paul, I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I do. Confident of God's mercy, let us own up to the war that rages in our own hearts. Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profits and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom of intellect and reason and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Who will rescue us from this body of death? I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
you are forgiven. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. God of hope and new life, open our hearts, open our minds to hear and celebrate your word today. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, wore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me. If not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Bir Lahoi Roy and was settled in the neighborhood. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up he saw camels coming. And Rebecca looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. 
And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy wisdom, holy war, thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden those things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Nobody told stories quite like my granddaddy. We'd be riding down this long, straight Texas road with nothing between us and the horizon but a barbed wire fence. He'd take a kitchen match and with the thumbnail, he'd strike it and he'd light up a unfiltered camel cigarette and after a few miles, he'd begin to talk. I had to listen carefully because the Dodge pickup cab, whoa, it was very noisy. What with the Coke bottles rattling around in the floorboards and the wind rushing through the windows like a blast furnace. One summer, after I had gotten a Christmas present of a tape recorder, I, I took it with me to the farm for my annual visit and I carried it around like some cub reporter trying to catch my grandfather on tape. It was a lost cause. As soon as I turned the machine on, he would clam up tighter than a snapping turtle who hasn't yet heard it thunder. The stories couldn't be forced. They just had to, to flow to come out of his mouth when the mood struck him. One day, after we had checked the beehives on the site where my grandmother's childhood home had once stood, he told me about how he had asked for her hand in marriage. I loved Opal right smart, he said, and one evening, around sunset, I told her mama we wanted to get married. She didn't much like the idea. Opal hadn't quite finished high school yet, but I had brought in a good crop of cotton and I had money in my pocket and we reckoned the time was right. Mrs. Shive called her husband. Willie, she said, Willie, come out here on the porch and listen to what these fool kids want to do. It was already past eight, so my great-grandfather was already asleep. He got up and came out onto the porch, hitching up one shoulder strap of his bib overalls, his walrus mustache drooping, Willie Shive weighed 300 pounds if he weighed an ounce, and he did not much like being waked up. What if we said no? He said, well, sir, I said, 
I reckon we just run off and get married anyway. My granddaddy took a long draw from his camel. He didn't say another word for several miles. He just kept staring through the windshield of that Dodge pickup, grinning. Must have been a bit like that for Isaac, our many, many times great granddaddy in the faith. Long after his own farming days had ended, he sat on the porch or under a shade tree, perhaps, and looked out over the fields, recalling his first sight of Rebecca, the woman the Bible very clearly says he loved. Isaac must have looked across that field day after day, ever since his daddy Abraham had dispatched his right-hand man to travel back to the land of their kinfolk to find a good match for Isaac. Anything could happen on a trip like that. The servant might not come back at all. He might come back empty-handed. Travel in those days was a perilous undertaking. Besides, there was no guarantee that his search would be successful. Suppose a suitable young woman couldn't be found. Suppose, she says, I'm not getting on a camel and riding all the way to Canaan to marry a man I've never met. Suppose she is willing, but has a face like a donkey and a disposition to match. I can imagine Isaac scanning the horizon every evening and praying, Lord, you kept your promise to my father and mother when I was born to them so late in life. If it's not too much trouble, Lord, could you perhaps send me a wife who is fair to look upon? Then one evening Isaac sees dust on the horizon. A caravan is coming his way. He strikes off across the field, trying not to run. It would appear undignified to be seen running, don't you think? And I wonder, how do you suppose Rebecca might have told her side of the story to her grandchildren? I was going down to the spring with my water jar and saw a man, a foreigner, with a full entourage of camels and camel drivers. When I had filled my jar, the foreigner asked me for a drink. So of course I gave him one, and then I watered his camels too. It was the hospitable thing to do. He stood staring at me for a long time, as though he was trying to work out something in his head. And then he opened his bag and produced two gold bracelets, weighing at least five shekels apiece, and a ring for my nose. You won't believe this, children, but nose rings were the height of fashion in my day. <laughs> then he asked me whose daughter I was, and I told him. And then I ran home to tell my brother Laban. That night, the foreigner told us that he had come all the way from Canaan in search of a wife for his master's son, and I was the one he had been sent to find. He said the Lord's hand was in it. My mother wanted me to wait for at least 10 days before making my decision, but the man was anxious to return. Will you go with him now? My mother and my brother asked. I didn't hesitate for an instant. I will, I said. But then, as we got further and further from home, I began to have second thoughts. Suppose this man Isaac doesn't like me. Suppose I don't like him. Suppose he has a face like a donkey with a disposition to match. On the last day of that terribly long journey, I looked out across a field and I saw a man walking toward us. 
he was young and handsome and gawky, <laughs> like he was trying to hurry, but didn't want anyone to see that he was in a hurry. Something about him made me want to laugh. I slipped off that dreadful camel and asked Abraham's servant, who is that man? Well, children, it was your grandfather. I was so embarrassed. I wasn't wearing my veil. I found it quickly and put it on, but I was sure he saw me, that he must have seen me, and I wasn't even wearing my nose ring. We were married right away. I told him on our wedding night how he had made me laugh coming across that field. Of course, he said. It's my name, isn't it? And, by the way, I saw you that day without your veil. Some passages in the Bible contain profound sayings that are rich in theological symbolism. Some contain less weightier matters and delight in them. A walk in the cool of the evening, the laughter of an old woman who receives an outrageous promise, the sight of a young woman with good manners pouring water from a jar. This story of the arranged marriage of Isaac to Rebecca is no doubt told to make a theological point. Abraham and Sarah, though old, will bear a son. Isaac, though still a bachelor when Sarah dies, will take a wife. God will work it out. God will keep God's promises. God's promises do not fail. But while affirming this theology of God's faithfulness, this story finds other occasions for delight. <laughs> a man named Laughter, trying to walk quickly across a field without surrendering his male dignity. A young woman with her hair down to her shoulders, digging through her luggage, trying to find her best veil and a golden nose ring. A sunburnt old servant whose name we don't even know, grinning in his unnatural role as a matchmaker. It's as though this story were, were being told by an old West Texas farmer in the cab of his Dodge pickup truck rolling down a long straight road with his grandson by his side. Did I ever tell you that story about great-great-granddaddy Isaac and the day he laid eyes on his bride for the first time? It takes a good 30 miles to tell it, but after he's finished you want to hear it again because you know that even though all this happened long, long ago, it is somehow your story too. For God is in and through and under every word of it. And it's just possible that God is in and through and under every word of your life story too. Keeping promises, taking care, working in ways you cannot imagine right now. You hear their story and you hear yours too as the miles roll by and the shadows lengthen. The promises God made to them, God makes to you. The promises God kept to them, God keeps to you, even as your story is still unfolding. The psalmist put it this way, How weighty are your thoughts, O God, how vast the sum of them. I try to count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. 
no matter how our stories end, we are still with God. God the promise keeper, God the divine lover, God the beginning and the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us profess the faith in which we baptize. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, our Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I'm standing here in my Compassion Camp t-shirt today because today, July 5th, Compassion Camp began for our students in preschool and elementary school here at First Presbyterian Church. Um, each week of Compassion Camp, our campers will look at a theme and a Bible story that will um, have activities for them to explore those things throughout the week. This week, our theme is At the Table. And we read the story of the prodigal son. Throughout the week, our families are going to be looking at how we welcome people, how we are accepting, and how we do things from someone else's perspective. You might want to do that at home for the week also. Thanks to all of those who participated in our youth group sponsored uh, dance and prance for food in cans last Sunday. We had a huge carload of food that went over to elder care services, and they were so excited to get that food as they haven't had as many donations um, during this time of everyone staying at home. This Wednesday night was our book group for Rabbit Cake. We had a great discussion, and we look forward to um, our August 5th book group, where we will be discussing and um, reflecting on how to be an anti-racist. So if you still need that book, um, contact me, Christy, at oldfirstchurch.org, and I'll be happy to get it to you. Lastly, in the newsletter, you saw information about a Zoom meeting this coming Monday, um, tomorrow, at 7.15 for an affinity group. This will be a group that gets together to do a little bit more discussing and conversation about um, how we might do things right here in Tallahassee to dismantle systems of uh, racism and also white supremacy. So if you're interested in those topics and want to talk a little bit more about what we might do in this community, um, please get on that Zoom call and the information was in the newsletter. Hope you all have a great week. This morning, we offer prayers for healing for Priscilla Harrison, Tara Reynolds, Terry Green, Jan O'Neill, Charles Freeman, Skip West, Christy Hay, Wayne Friedman, Peggy Mellinger, Dan Hughes, Rita, mother of Andel Rossi, Deborah Kelty, Sabrina Wright, Wilton Kane, father of Robin Stevenson, LaRue Dewey, mother of Laura Morse. Let us offer prayers for strength and mercy for Laura, daughter of Patsy Kicklighter, for Merdina Campbell and the rest of the staff at the Kearney Center, for Monique Ellsworth and the staff and volunteers at the Second Harvest of the Big Bend, for healthcare providers at our hospitals and urgent care centers and first responders, for Patricia McCoy-Delancey, Thaddeus Gillen, 
Sarah Lamar, and Myrna McGowan. We pray for Pastor at Sama Hernandez and the Presbyterian Church in Cuba, and for the Churches of the Presbytery of Florida. We pray for the Pastor Nominating Committee as they work to discern God's will. We also pray for those in military service, including Zach McGuff, Jonathan Babineau, Brian Wiso, and Ross Yielding. And last, we rejoice that Aaron Rossica has been approved by the Committee on Preparation for Ministry of the Florida Presbytery as ready to receive a call to minister of word and sacrament in the PCUSA Church. Let us say prayers for the world, for ourselves, and especially on this day, let us pray for our nation. God of old friends and new beginnings, in Jesus you welcomed children, you blessed them and laid your hands upon them. We thank you for your servants in this day who welcome children of every race and background to a safe place of nurture, growth, and love. Especially we thank you for your servants, Alexandra, whose service as director of First Presbyterian Preschool ended this week, as she has blessed others. Bless her in retirement and ever increase in her the gifts of your spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our nation in the time of crisis. God of all ages, in your sight nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Now when our land is troubled, be near to judge and save. May leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search your will and see it clearly. If we have turned from your way, help us to reverse our ways and repent. Give us your light and your truth to guide us. Through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this world and our Savior. Amen. Let us play, pray for governments of the world. O oh, high and holy God, you rule the ways of peoples and govern every earthly government. Work with those who work for peace. Make every person an authority and agent of your reconciliation and every diplomat and ambassador of hope bring peace and goodwill among all people, fulfilling among us the promise made in Jesus Christ, who was born to save the world. Amen. O oh God, you love justice. You establish peace on earth. Send your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Teach us to be compassionate toward the whole human family. Strengthen the will of those who fight for justice and for peace. Lead the nations into the path of peace and give us that peace which the world cannot give. Almighty God, bless those who hold office in the government of this state, county, and city that they may work in a spirit of wisdom, kindness, and justice. Help them to use their authority to serve faithfully and to promote the general welfare. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us on this day pray for responsible citizenship. O oh Lord, keep this nation under your care. Help us elect trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions for the general welfare, repent of past wrongs, reform unjust systems, so that we may serve you in our generation and honor your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you created all people in your image. We thank you for the astonishing variety of races and cultures in this world. 
enrich our lives by ever widening circles of friendship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of mercy, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of Christ. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Freely we have received, let us freely give. Let us make gifts of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Almighty and merciful God, from whom comes all that is good, we praise you for your mercies, for your goodness that has created us, your grace that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, your patience that has borne with us, and your love that has redeemed us. Help us to love you and to be thankful for all your gifts by serving you and delighting to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.